Hi everyone, I'm Abby Tipler and I'm one of the surgeons at Veterinary Specialist Services. As a lot of you will know, as part of our residency training program, we need to perform some original research. And my research was looking into the catheterization of female dogs. And thanks to my colleague, Anita Parkin, we came up with a novel catheterization device, which um, we tested looking at whether or not it was helpful when teaching veterinary students when they're first learning how to perform the procedure. So I was lucky enough to present my research at Science Week and ACVS this year. So I thought that I would share the recording with all of you as well, in case it helps you out in your own practices when performing this sometimes very tricky procedure. So I hope you enjoy, it's a short presentation and I'll share it with you now. The title of my abstract is Urinary Catheterization of Female Dogs, a comparison between three techniques for catheter placement and thank you to my fellow authors, Eleanor Moses, Associate Professor Riston Greer, Dr. Peter DeLissa, Dr. Blaine McCracken, and Adjunct Professor Philip Moses. And also to Veterinary Specialist Services for facilitating this research. And again, a special thank you to Anita Parkin, who came up with the idea for the novel catheterization device. I have no conflicts of interest. Urinary catheterization is frequently indicated for hospitalized dogs to relieve urinary obstruction, measure urinary output, dysuria for the assistance of nursing care, postoperative to urinary or neurological surgery, and to prevent urine retention or urinary obstruction. Urinary catheterization, however, has many reported complications, including urethritis, urethral mucosal damage at insertion, urinary tract perforation by the stylet or catheter, and most commonly urinary tract infection. And catheter-associated urinary tract infections may lead to ascending infection to the ureters and kidney, bacteremia or sepsis and death. Urinary tract infection is a common complication post-urinary catheterization and has been reported in up to 20% of one-time catheterizations. A 27% increase in the risk with each additional day of hospitalization and a 10 to 50% um, chance of patients requiring in patients requiring catheterization overall. Factors that predispose to bacterial colonization during female dog catheterization include mucosal damage during insertion, contamination of the catheter during placement, the close proximity of the catheter to the anus leading to fecal contamination, the catheter providing a conduit for bacterial movement, and the presence of residual urine. And this is especially true if strict aseptic technique is not applied. The use of antibiotics prophylactically cannot be recommended and does not reduce the incidence of a urinary tract infection and can be associated with the development of antibiotic resistance. So this highlights the importance of considering other urinary tract preventative factors. The focus of urinary catheterization should be on strict asepsis during insertion and careful maintenance of the catheter while it is indwelling. And these practices have been previously reported to decrease the risk of urinary tract infections. So in summary, it is crucial that the catheter is placed as quickly, atraumatically and aseptically as possible. Techniques that have been previously described include blind palpation techniques relying on the palpation of anatomical structures and visualization techniques using a speculum or otoscope and a light source. Comparisons between these techniques has not been investigated to date, and the placement of a urinary catheter in a female dog can be challenging given the ureth urethral papilla is less accessible in the dog compared to humans. The primary objective of this study was to describe a novel technique for urinary catheterization using a catheterization device and to compare this technique when first learning to traditional techniques on the duration required for urinary catheter placement in cadaveric female dogs. The secondary objective was to survey participants' perceptions on the ease of learning the technique of urinary catheterization in females and which of the techniques they preferred. Nine client-owned dogs euthanized for purposes unrelated to the study were collected over a period of four weeks and kept in cold storage at three degrees Celsius. The cadavers were not frozen to try to preserve the anatomy. 
and prior to the commencement of the study, a further cadaver not subsequently used in the study was catheterised 30 times and the urethral papilla was checked to ensure it maintained a similar anatomy visually. Nine fourth-year veterinary students that had not placed a urinary catheter before were enrolled in the study. A 30-minute tutorial on urinary catheterisation was given to the participants immediately prior to the study. And the three different techniques of catheterisation were described with a video demonstrating each technique. The novel catheterisation device was a cylindrical structure made from clear polypropylene plastic, shown on the left. The end is tapered obliquely such that there is a long and a short end. And they were provided to participants in three sizes, large, medium and small. The internal diameters of these were 15 millimetres, 12 millimetres and 9 millimetres respectively. So the technique um, of insertion involves gently pulling the vulva ventrally. The urinary catheterisation device is then inserted into the vestibule with a longer edge on the dorsal wall. And then it is advanced until it blocks the vestibular vaginal junction as shown in the diagram on the right. It then allows the urethral papilla to be visualised in its centre for catheter insertion. This is a photograph showing the appearance of the urethral papilla through the catheterisation device. So three qualified veterinary technicians with at least three years of experience teaching urinary catheterisation to veterinary nurses, veterinary students and interns were recruited to te teach the techniques. There were three dogs in each row a small, medium and large dog, ranging in size from 4 to 40 kilos. There were three rounds of catheterisation and participants were cycled through the techniques so that each technique had an equal chance of being performed first, second or third in each round. Um, so overall the nine participants completed the three different techniques on all three size ranges of dogs, so 27 um, attempts in total. And for practical reasons, there was a cutoff time of 40 minutes. The tutors were also randomly assigned to a starting bench and were cycled. Therefore, if a particular tutor was more skilled at teaching a particular technique, it would not bias the results. Participants were encouraged to ask for help when required. And when they required assistance, they were required to hold up a stop sign and stop attempting catheterization. And when they had inflated the Foley catheter, they held up a complete sign. And correct placement was then confirmed visually by a tutor and the bladder was reinflated with yellow water. Times were retrospectively collected from the video footage and recorded to the nearest second. And if the stop sign was elevated during the procedure, then this time was subtracted from the total time. And total time was recorded from picking up the urinary catheter to inflation of the Foley balloon. This is our setup. And this is some of our equipment, including our yellow food dyed water. At the completion of the workshop, participants completed a post-workshop questionnaire which assessed their perceived ease of learning, ease of performing and preferred technique and also their preferred difficulty of learning, difficulty performing and least preferred technique. Kaplan-Meier survival survival analysis was used to estimate the median times to catheterisation and corresponding survival curves were generated. The log rank test was used to compare the time to catheterization for each of the three techniques. Mixed models Cox proportional hazard regression was used to compare the effective technique accounting for the repeated measures of student and to assess any effect of dog size with student fitted as a random effect. Blind palpation was set as the reference method. Univariate mixed Cox models were used to initially assess the effect of technique and dog size and a final model containing only influential variables was developed. Median times to catheterization were recorded and hazards ratios were 3.66 for visual with speculum compared to blind palpation and 3.57 for the novel catheterization device compared to blind palpation. So this means that for any point in time, you have a 3.66 times or a 3.57 times greater chance of achieving catheterization for speculum and novel catheterization device versus blind palpation. There was no effect of dog size on time to catheterization with the lowest p-value being 0.69 and the final model included only effective technique on time to catheterization. This is the Kaplan-Meier survival plot for time to catheterization using the three techniques and shows the median times 300, 420 and 725 seconds 
for speculum, novel catheterization device and blind palpation respectively as dashed vertical lines. Catheterization was achieved within the allotted um, 40 minutes in all 27 attempts in the visual with speculum and novel catheterization device groups, but only 23 of 27 attempts in the blind palpation group. In terms of the post-workshop questionnaire, this is obviously subjective data. However, what we found is that six of nine participants said they found the novel catheterization device the easiest technique to learn urinary catheterization. Two of nine participants said visual with speculum and one of nine said blind palpation. Five of nine participants said they found blind palpation the most difficult technique to learn. Four of nine said visual with speculum was the most difficult and zero of nine said the novel catheterization device was the most difficult. The results were the same when the question was reframed as which technique was the most difficult to perform and which was your least preferred technique. The ideal catheterization technique should be quick and easy to learn and perform whilst maintaining aseptic technique. Our study showed that the urinary catheterization technique of blind palpation was slower than visual with speculum and novel catheterization device. Possible reasons for this include participant difficulty palpating anatomical landmarks, multiple failed attempts to pass the catheter via palpation, or the visual technique being easier to perform due to visualisation of the urethral papilla. Our experience with teaching veterinary interns how to catheterise female dogs using blind palpation is consistent with these results. So on occasion, despite tutoring and time, the procedure is unable to be completed via blind palpation by the veterinary staff member in a reasonable amount of time. Reasonable time has not been previously discussed or defined in the veterinary literature. It is the author's opinion that a smooth urinary catheterization can be performed in under five minutes. Our study did not assess the ability to maintain the sterility between different techniques, but one proposed advantage of the novel catheterization device is that it comes pre-sterilized and the device prevents contact of the catheter with the wall of the vagina and vestibule during insertion. So an idea for further research would be to compare the incidence of urinary tract infections between techniques um, of insertion. Possible reasons that six of nine participants found the novel catheterization device the easiest technique include ease of holding the device steadily in one hand, the design of the longer craniodorsal edge blocking off the vagina, the ability of the device to cup the urethral papilla, the ability of the device to hold the folds of the vestibule completely away, or the size range allowing for selection of length according to patient size. Reasons participants may have found the blind palpation and visual with speculum the hardest include difficulty palpating landmarks or the difficulty in manipulating the vaginal speculum in one hand. So the speculum also requires um, the second dominant hand to lock the jaws open. And if this requires adjusting during the procedure, then the sterile catheter may need to be put down during this adjustment, which is not ideal. So the novel catheterization device can be manipulated and adjusted with just one hand. There were several limitations. One of the limitations was the use of cadavers, where there's no movement or bleeding if the tissues become traumatized. There may also be a difference in the tissue color or texture. So chilled versus frozen cadavers were used to help reduce this limitation. The sample size was small and the use of students may not be a good model for qualified veterinar veterinarians or trained veterinary technicians. So a randomised controlled study using live dogs and qualified staff is an idea for further research. So in summary, the results of the study indicate that a visual technique with speculum or novel catheterization device may be less difficult and require less time than blind palpation when teaching veterinary staff to place urinary catheters. Palpation appears to be the technique of least preference, increased time requirement and highest rate of failure. The novel urinary catheterization device may provide a simpler method of visualization of the urethral papilla and provide a more sterile way of placing the catheter, although further investigation is needed to confirm this. The novel catheterization device technique is simple and requires minimal training to perform. Therefore, it is a viable alternative technique for urinary catheterization. So just a fun fact, this is just a prototype, but Miela have taken parts of our design and modified it to include a slit in the top so it can be removed from the catheter. Um, and this should be released later this year or, or next year. And it also has a light. 
So I hope that it will be able to help vets with this sometimes very tricky procedure. And I really hope you enjoyed this talk. These are my references. Uh, thank you for listening and please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions.